Good morning. Today, I will be sharing my experience the very first time I ever auditioned for a DCI drum corps. Okay, so we're gonna flash all the way back to 2007, 13 years ago. Man, that was a long time ago. So I was a senior in high school, 17 years old, and I decided that it was finally time to march some DCI. Because at this point in my life, you know, I knew, I knew that band was what I wanted to do. I loved band. So I decided that I was gonna go audition for the Cadets Drum and Bugle Corps. At the time, they were my favorite drum corps. I loved their 2005 show, The Zone. This drum feature was crazy good. I think it's still my favorite drum feature, to be honest. Like, they had this super cool part where they all sung the rhythms. This drum feature was just like so choppy and cool and the quad feature was awesome. I loved this quad feature. It was actually the first quad feature I ever tried to transcribe. And conveniently for me, the cadets are based out of New Jersey, which is where I lived. So I had to beg my parents to pay the audition fee because it was like, I think 200 bucks or something. And yeah, I didn't have a job. Luckily, I have very nice parents and they gave me the money to go audition. And I legitimately thought that I was going to make this drum line. I thought I was hot stuff. I was like one of the best in my school, all state band, fourth chair. You know, I was pretty good. You know, I learned their drum feature. I thought I could do this. And I get a lot of people asking me like, hey, I'm gonna try out for like Carolina Crown or the Blue Devil or the Blue Coats. Like, what should I do? How should I audition? And my first response to all of you fine eager people is, have you marched anywhere else yet? Cause you're probably not gonna make the drum line if you don't have any marching experience outside of your high school. Cause to be honest, that's what they look for. Like at that high level, especially like the top like 12 cores, they're gonna want you to have marched in either like an open class or a DCA core or a WGI group or something. They wanna know that you can handle a summer of tour. So there's one thing being able to play the parts, but it's another thing being able to handle being away from your family for three months, you know, getting your butt kicked all summer in the heat. The only way they know you can handle that is if you marched another drum corps. So all of you super motivated kids out there, definitely go to the drum corps camp if you can afford to do that, but don't expect to get in if you never marched anywhere. I would recommend first going to your local open class or DCA corps, march there for a year, and then try your hand at one of the world class corps. But I didn't know any of that crap at the time. I just thought I was gonna, you know, go there, play the Cadets 2005 feature and get a spot. But all that aside, I still had some other issues going into this drum corps camp. Number one, I didn't get the exercise book until like two days before the camp started. And I talked about this in my top five most horrific audition experiences. I registered for this camp like two weeks in advance and they never sent me the audition packet. And I went back and forth contacting them like, where the heck is this music? I gotta learn all this crap. So I learned all these exercises in like a day and I got them to the point where I could play them kind of while reading and I could sort of get through them. And the other part of the audition was to do an individual solo and I had an epic solo prepared. I was getting ready to do this I and E contest for our local indoor circuit and I wrote like the hardest crap I could possibly play and I was gonna wow them with all these beats. Yeah! And issue number two was that I was really worried I was gonna get lost on the drive to this place. So the school the audition was being held at was about 45 minutes from where I lived and I hadn't been driving for very long. Like I just got like my full license recently and this was gonna be by far the furthest I have ever driven. I remember this was 2006, right? Cause it was getting ready for the 2007 season. And this was before GPS on smartphones were a thing. And I don't think our family had a GPS. So I had to print out directions on MapQuest and just read the paper as I was driving. And I have like the worst freaking sense of direction ever. Like I would get lost in my high school hallway, like going from one class to the other. Like I didn't know how I was gonna drive all the way to this town that I never been to. But luckily for me, my dad is super nice and awesome. And a couple days before the camp, we did a dry run drive from our house to this school so that I can memorize how to get there. Okay, so the day comes for this audition. I'm kind of sort of prepared a little bit. I get my truck, I drive all the way there. I somehow didn't get lost, I made it there. And I was like ridiculously early cause I was convinced that I was gonna get lost on the way there. And I got there like three hours before they even like started doing registration. So I just go into the school, there's like nobody there yet. I just like start screwing around. I'm like trying to learn the exercises on the pad and I'm just kind of waiting. And then finally people start trickling in. Also, this was not the first camp of the year, the audition and experience camp. I missed that because I had like all South Jersey honors band audition 
missions or something. So this was actually the first callback camp. Like, all the vets and the people that got called back from the audition camp, all these people were there, so... Kind of skipped the first round, but it's all right. Let's just jump into it, right? So then I find out, you know, where the tender line is, and I meet with those guys, and we start going to the truck to get the drums off. I talked about this in my top 10 most awkward band experiences. I never used Yamaha drums at the time with the, like, scoop harness. So I tried to set these drums up on the stand, and the freaking thing, like, rolled off and flipped all the way down the stairs, and I looked like a total <coughs> dick, like, before we even started doing anything. Okay, so this rehearsal starts. There's about, like, 10 quad players there, something like that, and Remember, these are all either vets or people that got called back, and then me, this random high school kid that showed up. So the instructors that were there, we had the quad tech Stan, and there was also the caption heads, which were Colin McNutt and Tom Ungst. So we're playing, we're drumming through like eight on a hand legatos, I can get through that one while reading it. And I remember like not even like 10 minutes into playing, I got called out like right away by Colin. He told me I wasn't hitting the drums hard enough, like at all. And I guess the technique we used like at my high school, we like kind of played with a lighter touch. And here in drum corps, you gotta play with some sack, you know what I'm saying? So this was like super weird to me, I felt like I was like beating the crap out of the drums, but in reality this is like the way you gotta play, and it was just like... Totally different than the way I was used to playing. But I was doing my best trying to adjust on the fly, and that's another tip I give people. Like, whatever comment you get from the instructors at these audition camps, like, do your absolute best to adjust to the technique, because that's what they want to see in order for you to make the line. They want to see that you can play like the way the other vets do and the way that they want you to play. So we go through most of the exercise packet. I'm doing okay. I didn't really break that much from what I remember, even though I was really unprepared with this music. Then they said we're going to work on the cadence. I never got the cadence. This was not in the warm-up packet that they sent me. And I was the only person in the room that didn't have this music. Like, everybody else probably got it at, like, the audition experience camp and had been preparing it for that whole month. And then there's me, random high school kid that's gonna have to sight read this crap. But I was doing pretty good, like, better than I ever had, and I was really proud of myself. And the tenor tech, you know, he took notice to that and he gave me some compliments that I was doing a pretty good job for just getting the thing, like, a couple minutes ago. Okay, so rehearsal ended for that night. This was Friday night. The whole camp is three days long. You got the Friday night, all day Saturday, and then Sunday in the morning. So everyone went into the gym to, you know, get in their air mattresses and sleeping bags and go to sleep. But... Here's problem number three. I didn't know how I was supposed to take a shower. Like, I'd never showered in a group setting before, and I knew, like, going into this that that was what happened, but I was, like, really nervous to get naked in front of everyone. I didn't know if there was, like, proper etiquette or, like, if I should wear a bathing suit. I think I actually packed a bathing suit, like a total noob. And I remember I, like, went into the bathroom to brush my teeth and I was gonna, like, scope out the area to see what was going on, but I was just, like, so tunnel visioned. I just, like, walked to the sink with my head down, brushed my teeth, and then left and didn't shower, like a nasty, disgusting thing. Day two. Okay, so we wake up in the morning on day two, and we go and eat breakfast, and keep in mind, I didn't know anybody at this camp. I went all by myself. Like, I asked some of the kids in my high school drumline to come, but, like, none of them, like, really wanted to or didn't think they were good enough to do it, so... I'm all alone here, people. And I remember at every single meal, I just kind of sat with the tenor vets. It was uh, this guy, Brian, and this other guy, Nibbles. And you know, they were like super nice dudes. Like they didn't mind having this random high school kid just tagging around with them. So the first thing we did that morning was a little visual audition. Now all of you who follow DCI know that the cadets, they march off of the right foot. When they step off, their right foot goes first. 99-ish percent of groups do left foot lead. Like, this was, like, the opposite of what I was used to. But I knew that going in there, and I kind of worked on it a little bit before this, so I didn't do too bad with that. And then for the rest of the day, we did, uh, some subsectionals, and then we had battery ensemble, and I got called out a lot because my technique was jacked up because I was trying to play louder. And that night, we did the individual auditions. So I went in there, you know, you get the adrenaline going in these individual auditions. Like, I had freaking, it was Tom Ungst and Colin McNutt, like, two of, like, the biggest names in DCI, and I was, you know, a little bit freaking out. But before I even played anything, you know, we talked a little bit, you know, I told them, like, the high school I went to, that I was fourth chair all-state band. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. And they also asked me how comfortable I was with the exercise packet, and I was honest with them, I told them that I wasn't comfortable because I just got it, like, two days ago. So they just told me that I could play some exercises that I was comfortable with, which was the exercises we were doing in my high school marching band. So I played those instead. And this whole individual audition, I was getting called out for, you know, sound quality and technique and everything. But it's okay, right? 
like I said, I had an amazing solo prepared. Like, I was gonna knock their socks off with this. So I played this freaking choppy, crazy solo that I wrote. And I remember I had, like, a really good rep on it. I hit, like, maybe just, like, one rim total. Like, I did really, really good on this. By the way... If we hit 3,000 likes on this video, I will do a reaction video to that solo. My first ever tenor I and E solo in high school. Yeah! So after I got done this solo, like, I look up and, like, I see Colin and Tom just, like, kind of, like, confused. It turns out they were, like, really surprised that I had those kind of chops, but I played with, like, really bad sound quality. Again, they called me out and they said, like, yeah, like, you should really learn sound quality before you learn all those choppy things. Like, it's very interesting. And I remember Colin actually got up and went behind the drums and like demonstrated like, okay, you did like some kind of sweet pattern like this and this is how you played it. This is how you should play it. And you played with like real beefy, loud sound quality. So I got a lot of good information in this audition, but then came the part where they write down a little number on their sheet. If you get a one, that means you're called back. If you get a two, then you're maybe called back. If you get a three, then I'll well, see you later. Not to anyone's surprise, they wrote down the number three, and I got cut. But I wasn't surprised. I was kind of expecting that to happen. I had like good chops, but like my sound quality and technique was jacked. I had a lot of stuff to work on for the next time I audition. And if you didn't notice behind me, the goal went up. 4,000 likes, I will talk about first time I auditioned for a DCA core and how that went. It was interesting. So now it's time to go to sleep again, Saturday night. So it was my second time to try to figure out how to take a shower. And I did literally the exact same thing I did the night before. I just walked in tunnel vision, head down, brushed my teeth, and then left. Didn't shower again like a disgusting creature. Oh man, so na like three days in a row without showering. That is gross. My advice is just get naked. Just get naked. Right now, get naked. Day three. Okay, so Sunday morning comes around. We just drummed an ensemble the whole time. It was fine, it was cool, it was interesting. I already knew I was cut. I just tried to do my best to adjust my technique with all the comments I was getting, and I thought I did a decent job. And then came the other part, the last part that I was really worried about was driving home. I was worried I was gonna get lost again, but somehow I didn't. I made it home off of the freaking map quest directions. I was like so proud of myself for that. So proud of myself for that. I did some really good adulting that week. Like this was the most adult experience I had ever had up to that point. Like, I was all on my own for a whole weekend. Like, a whole weekend, people. So that's my story of my first ever DCI audition experience. It went kind of bad, but at least I got a lot of good information and improved, and then ended up marching through years of DCI after that. I hope this video was informative and maybe helpful to some of you younger people looking to audition for DCI, and some of you older people that have DCI experience, please compose some comments and let me know how your auditions went. And also make sure you click that subscribe button, because the goal of 69,420 subscribers is coming upon us. We just passed 60,000, only 9,420 more to go. And also don't forget to ring that Liberty Bell and click that like button. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. I will leave the link in the description. And have a good morning.